What's up, this is Danny Garcia, and you're now watching BehindTheGloves.com. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the customary introduction of uh, another fighter to join the Matchroom Stable. It gives me a huge amount of pleasure to welcome Martin Murray to the camp. Obviously, uh, announcement made last week that Martin will uh, debut for Matchroom Boxing and return to Sky Boxing. Um, on our June 26th show at Liverpool Echo Arena on a card with Tony Bellew, Callum Smith against Christopher Rabras, and Rocky Fielding against Brian Vera. Um, I've nearly signed Martin quite a few times and uh, I feel like I've got him at a great time. Been involved in fights against the very toughest fighters in the middleweight division. Just two losses on his record and a draw, controversial draw to Felix Sturm. A fight against Sergio Martinez in Argentina that I felt he definitely won. And a fight against Gennady Golovkin taking him 11 rounds. Um, by far Golovkin's toughest fight yet. Um, I think he deserves a huge amount of credit. I've been a big admirer of Martin Murray as a fan. Um, and now we get a chance to build him on Sky and give him those big fights in the UK. All those three fights that I've mentioned, he travelled to obviously Monaco, Argentina and Germany for those fights. And I feel like, particularly if they were here, the Sturm fight and the Martinez fight, he would have won both of them. So what I like most about Martin Murray is the conversations are very, very short. And the answer is nearly always yes. Now, when we had our chat last week, we had a, a 10 or 15 minute chat. He knew what we had to do. We had to get him back on a big platform, let people see him again. But also, he has the ability to be in huge fights at 160 or 168 pounds. We're definitely not limiting ourselves to 160 pounds, but the fights out there at 168 pounds domestically are, are breathtaking. You know, I said to him, what do you think about the James the Gale fight? Yeah, I love that. Obviously, if George Groves wins the world title, do you think, yeah, I have that. Now, what do you think about the Chavez fight? Yeah, I have that. You know, what do you think about the Andy Lee fight? Yeah, I have that. That's the kind of conversations you have with Martin Murray. And it's our job now to put him in a position in those fights where he is the home fighter and he is the A-side fighter. And he's got the profile through being involved in those huge fights to be able to do that very quickly, in, in my opinion. Um, June the 26th is about getting out, having a 10 round. It probably comes two or three weeks quicker than anticipated for Martin Murray. And then from there, we have the opportunity to get him out in Hull on August the 1st, if we need to. September the 12th will be a huge show for us at the O2. James DeGale is floating around looking for a world title defence in October, November. Might even box in September and again in December. So we have the ability to put Martin Murray in those fights very quickly. But we want to build him into a position. I don't think that will necessarily happen over the period of four or five weeks. So. I'm going to talk more after, but, but firstly, Martin, a few words, your thoughts on the move and also your thoughts about 160, 168 pounds. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming. It, um, it kind of only got arranged last week with, uh, with, with the matchroom deal, but like Eddie said, I've always been close to signing you know, quite a few times, but um, this time there was no there, there was there was no second thoughts on where I wanted to be and who I wanted to be with. And it was with Matt Drew, Eddie, and Sky Sports. You know, they they the way they're building fighters and and the way they're building fights and getting good opportunities to fighters. I think it's time that that's what I needed rather than going all the way around the world fighting all these champions in the backyard. I think it, I knew after the Golovkin fight it was time to come home and. Uh, yeah, there's no, there's no better a bigger platform to do it than this guy's boxing and with Matt Trim. Now, the, the move to 168 is is something that me and my team spoke about for a, for a long while. We've always knew that I'd, I'd make a better super middleweight than middleweight. But my opportunities at that time was at middleweight, so obviously I, I, I have to stay that weight. And like Kerry said, we're not really an out middleweight. It's still a weight I can and will do if need be. But there's some massive fights that are worth me to see from middleweight and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it and you know, the, the move up in weight, it, it's going to do me more more good than I am, you know, it's not about me putting £8 on, it's about me not taking it off, which we we feel, me and my team feel that it, it's kind of, we know that it's it, it's worked against us in fights gone by, you know, it's, it's been a couple of years now since I felt strong at 160 and we know now making 168 you're going to see a bigger and better Martin Murray. 
Sitting here as a fight fan, Martin, got so many questions that I want to ask you that I'm sure the media have asked, but I'm going to ask them as well. Your experiences against um, Martinez, Golovkin, put you in unbelievable stead for big fights here. You know, you're in a situation where if a big fight was made with De Gale, Groves, that, those kind of, that kind of opposition, especially in the UK, couldn't, couldn't necessarily phase you, having been to Martinez's backyard, having fought Gennady Golovkin. So, really the experience you've had puts you in huge stead for that. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Groves and De Gale, both, both world-class fighters. And they're the fights I want to have. You know, I've always said I wanted big domestic fights, and um, the fact that now I can get them, you know, I wanted the ones at middleweight. They didn't happen for whatever reason, but but now obviously, you know, the the the, the weight, the super middleweight division over there is absolutely buzzing, and uh, yeah, I'm just glad to be in the mix and offer them the type of fights that that can get made. Taking those three fights and breaking them down, Stern, Martinez, Golovkin. Where do you feel you are as a fighter now? compared to all those three <coughs> stages of, of those particular fights? I, I know I'm the best, the best I've ever been. You know, I've, you, they say you learn more off your losses than your wins, and I definitely learn more off that fight than than, um, than all my previous before, even though we did get beat. But, you know, I only, start, I only turned pro at 25, so I started quite late, and, you know, I feel like I'm just getting into my prime now, so I'm really looking forward to this next stage of my career and uh, the fact that it's on Sky Sports and, you know, the platform that they live is, is unbelievable. So yeah, I'm, uh, even though I got beat in my last fight, obviously it's um, it's not good, because you're only as good as your last fight, but um, I'm just really looking forward to the future now. And you know, the, like I said, I'm the best I've ever been. I feel personally, and you know, there's going to be lots more to come from me. Obviously, up at super middleweight, James DeGale is world champion. George Groves could become world champion. How do you feel you, you performing those fights. I mean obviously you've definitely got the better resume in terms of you know opposition but both fights you, you fancy obviously to go a different kind of fighter to Groves. I mean I'll you know put you as a, as a big favourite in the George Groves fight. I think it's a great fight as well but you fancy obviously both of those fights. Obviously yeah uh, I've always said you know um, I just want to fight the best. I, I want to I be in big fights and when I retire, when I have the glove, gloves up, when I retire, at least I can say, you know, I fought the best. I, did, I didn't duck anybody, and that's what I've always, um, that's what I've always gone along in my career. And obviously, they're, they're the fights I want. I mean, I've always gone into every fight, no matter who it's been against, believing I can win. You know, and I will go into them type of fights, knowing knowing that I can win. And even even in the Golovkin fight, you know, when things got hard, I was down, I was in the corner, and you know, it was tough. I still thought in my head I was going to win. Do you know what I mean? And and, and, and that's the type of fight that I am. So, you know, I'm, I'm relishing them type of fights. And yeah, obviously, hopefully they're going to they're gonna um, come along. And when they do, I'm obviously going in there to win like always. Good stuff. Obviously, that super middleweight division at the moment, just to talk briefly about that. At world level, you've got James DeGale on the back of a, a fantastic win against Andre Durrell. George Groves challenging Badu Jack in September. And not just that, Paul Smith out fighting against Andre Ward on June the 20th. Carl Froch, future still undecided. Rocky Field inviting Brian Vera. You know, Rocky's very close with Martin and a stable mate with Oliver Harrison. Um, and also Callum Smith, who's fighting Christopher Abras. So in terms of the domestic scene, by far the hottest division of all of them, and one that uh, carries at least one world title, potentially two. So we're very excited moving forward. Obviously, June the 26th is the first step. We wanted to bring Martin down here today. He's got a lot of media work today and tomorrow with Sky. And the journey starts on June the 26th. Um, already a number of approaches in the last sort of three or four days for huge fights for Martin Murray all over the world. But the key right now and the focus is, is to remain in the UK, to build him here. Um, obviously, he's got huge links with St. Helens Rugby Club. And a, a quick thank you to Andrew McHale as well, uh, Martin's manager, who you know, we have the dream to go to St Helens Rugby Club and, and I know they all feel that it would, it would fit up quite quickly. For me, we can do that, no problem, but we have a job to do first, to build Martin, let him fight in the UK market, let him enjoy the fights here in the big nights and um, there'll be a world title fight for Martin in a minimum of the next 12 months, that's for sure, and I'm looking closer to 8 to 10 to 12 because I think he's ready for the world title fights right now. It's just a case of getting him in a position and making sure that he's commercially 
in a position to benefit from those fights rather than just take a fight as a challenger. And um, he's coming around at a great time for British boxing. On the back of the May the 30th show, another world champion, Kevin Mitchell in a great fight. British boxing is buzzing. And those kind of nights that you saw at the O2, there's been huge demand, not just from our broadcasters, but from the fans for more of those nights. And what that enables us to do is bring over the big names. So you'll see Martin Murray in, in big fights very, very soon. So he's available for you to uh, have a chat to. So am I, we're gonna have a quick photo up here and uh, see you shortly, thank you. Fans, if you guys haven't already done so, make sure you download the Behind the Gloves app. It's free and it features really cool stuff like a fight calendar that reminds you of all the upcoming fights. And it allows for you to, with one click, to remind yourself directly to your phone. And it also features 24 seven breaking news that's going on in boxing. So make sure you guys go ahead and do that and subscribe to this channel.